Here we go. So how does a 2017 27-inch 5K iMac perform in 2023? Let me just show you. Welcome back to the channel. So what I want to do really quickly is if you watch my channel, you know, I just did a video, my last video about this beautiful system over here. This is a 2017 27 inch, the bigger one, 5K iMac. So it's a couple years old, going on about six years old now. And I did a video, just my last video on why you should pick one of these up in 2023. So check that out. I gave you all the reasons why I love it. Now I'm going to show you exactly how this thing performs. And let me just kind of explain what I normally do. I don't want to go back and I don't want to tell you, hey, um, here are the benchmarks on this thing. Look up the benchmarks. You can look those up on YouTube. There's millions of benchmarks. It doesn't tell you much. So how does this perform now in 2023? That's the main thing I want to show people. So I'm going to share my screen here in a second. I'm going to show you how different apps open up, how quickly they can open up, how fast they can render 1080p and how fast they can render uh, 4K video. And I use iMovie. So all this stuff's going to be a little bit different. I mean, I'm just going to open up basic apps and show you how would your general experience be using this system would it be very difficult to use or is it very fluent and that's what you're going to learn from this video so if you like that stuff stay tuned now before i actually jump into the video as well one thing i want to tell you is i modified this so this is the base model but with some modifications right and i had a video on this a long time ago if you want to know how i did this other part but first of all i upgraded the ram that's super easy there's a compartment in the back this has got 24 gigs of ram in it so costs almost nothing to do you can buy it on like OWC or something, add the RAM, this has got 24. Down here you can see it, I actually have a, an SSD drive, you can see it flashing there. I boot off that SSD, so this thing came with the Fusion drive, which is pretty fast in itself because it has a little bit of SSD, but I actually installed a Samsung SSD down here, just a normal you know, three and a half drive, hooked it up via USB-C, or basically it's not even, I don't think it's even Thunderbolt, um, I think it's 10 gigabits per second USB-C to this connection here, and I boot all my stuff off of this. So this is the actual brains of the computer right now, right here. So just wanna show you, that's full disclosure so that you know what you're looking at. Um, this actually is probably slower than having an SSD inside of it, and also you can pick these things up in my last video for very cheap, the i7 models. This is only an i5. So anyways, without further ado, I wanna set that stage for you. Let's get into the screenshots here, and let's just see how this thing performs, and let's go. And I just wanted to note too that my load time was 35 seconds. I don't need to show you that. You can sit there and watch. But that's actually really fast for a system of this age, maybe because I'm booting off that external SSD drive. You can rate your own systems, but 35 seconds is pretty good. So as we look at my desktop here, what do we want to do first? Well, you can see that there's nothing really open down here, right? So the nothing's been preloaded. So I'm going to just show you. If, you. if you came into this system, you just turned it on like I did. I went down and I wanted to go to Safari. I'm going to click on Safari. You can see it right here in one let me go down here, one, two, three, I clicked on it, and look at that. Within less than a second, the thing comes up. Less than a second. Now, I'm gonna go up here. Some of these websites are harder to actually get to. Like ESPN is pretty powerful as far as what it has to do behind the scenes. So it's usually a slow loading website. So I'm just gonna try that on here. Obviously your, your internet connection matters here quite a bit, but also your computer. But look how fast that loaded in. I mean, it basically it's loading in some of the ads and stuff, but you can see how fast just browsing in general works. Um, and older systems, here's Bing, two seconds, not even one second just to load everything. So your experience with loading things like just searching for stuff and doing the internet, as long as you have a fast connection, you can see how fast this system is. I mean, you saw how fast it loads within seconds, less than a second to bring up even Safari itself. And again, this is a 2017 system. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shut down Safari so not running a ton of stuff in the background. And uh, let me go ahead and see what else we got here. So if I check my list here, what do we wanna go through? A Couple different things. So let's say the next thing you wanna do is a pages document. So I'm gonna go down to pages. Now watch this, one, two, three, click. We're waiting one, what was that, about a second? Maybe it took about a second right there. Then we're gonna go ahead and double click on the blank. It's thinking for a second there. Now I can open up and I can start working. There we go. So you can see how fast, I mean, obviously if I highlight things and bold them and whatever, it's gonna take two seconds. You can see the idea behind this. It's very, very quick with pages. That's not a problem with this system. Very quick, probably quicker than most things. Let me go ahead and delete that. And I'm gonna shut down pages. Again, if you're into numbers, same thing. I mean, numbers is gonna be very similar to pages. 
click on it and uh, what was that, less than a second again, it loads, you can see on my screen here. Go ahead and click on the blank. It's gonna think about a second there and it opens up a brand new spreadsheet where you can go ahead and crunch all your numbers that you need to crunch. Very, very easy as well, right? So things that are a little more taxing, I mean like GarageBand for example, it's a little bit bigger program, it takes a little longer to load. So here it is right here, one, two, three, click on it. Now one, two, it's still loading, three, maybe three seconds, now it's doing the projects. Maybe three to four seconds, the little garage band. And uh, you know, obviously I have a couple songs in here I've created, let's listen. Pretty good, huh? But anyways, you get the idea. You can see in the timeline here, I can go ahead and, and there's literally nothing to stutter, obviously. There's no, no hiccuping or nothing. Sometimes it doesn't pick up correct on the camera, but you can go frame by frame in GarageBand. You can add a lot of different tracks to it. I'm not gonna test the tracks. Again, this is not what this is about, stress testing this. I'm just showing you, if you were a normal person, how this would work. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut down GarageBand right here. Let's go down and just quick GarageBand. And then we're gonna just keep moving along and, and, and uh, keep showing you how all these apps work. All right, really quickly, just two more, and then I'm gonna get into the video editing. That's more interesting, I think. But if you go down here, you can see, I mean, a new app that just came out is Freeform. It's down here. Brand new app for Ventura. This is a 2017 system, so not used to running it. But watch, one, two, three, click, and that was probably less than one-tenth of a second. It opens up Freeform, and you can go ahead and create your Freeforms and actually use them on multiple devices like that program's used for. Brand new program, just came out. So again, it can run the newest software as well, not a problem, has no problem with that kind of stuff. Keynote's usually a little bit more taxing as well. I'm gonna click on it, just clicked on it. But again, one second maybe, click on this. It usually takes about a second, second and a half right there opens up the presentations and you can go ahead and do whatever you want in here. Everything's very responsive, works perfectly. So as we keep moving on the list, I'm gonna shut this down. This is, the things that are more important now are gonna be, you know, this will maybe show you a little bit more about the power, right? You can see the experience. You can see how I can easily just navigate, watch this, I'm just through menu systems, everything like that. Everything is just fluid. There's nothing that's waiting or stuttering or you get no beach ball. I don't think I've seen one beach ball yet, have you? So, I mean, opening up Finder, one second, look at that, bam. You can sh you open it up, shut it down, and, and you're done with things in seconds. So why would I need a system faster than this? Well, video editing. If you're crazy, you might, but watch this. So I'm gonna go down to iMovie down here. You see my cursor? Can I go one? I'm gonna click at it in three. So one, two, three, click. And it's gonna, usually this takes a little while, right? It's about two, three, about three seconds. And I have a bunch of videos in there. So in three seconds, it loaded all that stuff including the old past videos, which usually takes a little bit of time. So now what I wanna do is a couple things. So I did a couple tests here. If I open this one up, I did a video test here. These are both the same amount of time. They're a six minute and 18 second clip. So six minutes and 18 seconds. I do a simple timeline, right? I'm using iMovie. Your test will be different. You're not gonna probably use iMovie. You're gonna use Final Cut. I usually have number of videos in 1080. I have some some obviously a couple different layers. I got a couple transitions you can see in here. Um, I got, what else do I have? Some sound files. I mean, nothing, I have a couple titles. I'm just giving, this is an example of video, but I'm just showing you, I, I have a pretty simple one. So use, you know, use yours with a grain of salt. Yours might be longer if you have a lot more advanced type setups with your, with your video editing. But I am pretty straightforward here. So you can see though, I mean, look at this. I don't know if you can tell, but look at the scrubbing on this. I mean. It's hard to pick up on camera, but there's not missing a frame or a beat. It's perfectly smooth. So I can go frame to frame. 1080p is just a super cinch. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a screen here. What my settings where you can see them here, I'm basically gonna do video and, and uh, audio, and then I'm gonna do high quality 1080p. You can see it right there. So that's pretty straightforward. And I'm not gonna make you suffer through all this, so I'm gonna click the button and come back and show you what it is. All right, so in that video, that, that, that clip was, it, first of all, it was 958 megabytes, so that's the size of it, right? 958 megabytes, and it was six minutes and 18 seconds long. So six minutes and 18 seconds long, it took three minutes and eight seconds to render it. So exactly half, believe it or not. So if you did a 10 minute video, it would take five minutes roughly. If you did a 20 minute video, it would take 10 minutes roughly. So what, for, if you're doing 1080p, this thing kills it, right? It's, it's half the time as the video. It, it'll actually render it in half the time in high quality. And it's almost a gig file. So it's perfectly capable of 1080p, no problem whatsoever. It just smears it. But again, now we're thinking about 4K. Can this older system be good for 4K? All right, so now we're worried about 4K, right? So we'll see what 4K can do. Here's, a, here's another video I have up here. I'm gonna click on it. This is one I actually put out on my channel a long time ago, but you can see down here, so we're in 4K now. These are completely 4K files, and you can see the scrubbing. Now the scrubbing is, is definitely gonna be a little bit, it's, it's not choppy, I would say. 
You can definitely go, if I click here, I can go frame by frame. I'm clicking now the keyboard. You can see each frame is perfect. If you scrub really fast, though, you're gonna get a little bit more stuttering, I guess, than you call it, than if you were just doing it normally with the 1080p, you can see it there. But it's still perfectly capable of doing it. You can stop anywhere, click on the button, do frame by frame, or I can hold it down and you can see how it's going. It's gonna maybe just do a little bit of something there, but overall, it's just, I mean, I work with it all the time. It doesn't bug me. And actually, it actually got a little bit worse with Ventura. It was a little bit smoother before when I was running an older OS, but I don't even care anymore. It works perfectly. So this video, 4K, is six minutes and 18 seconds, exactly the same as the 1080p one. This one actually is 2.38 gigabytes. The other one was about a gigabyte. This one's 2.38 gigabytes. Let's render this and we'll see. So you can see again, I'm choosing 4K, I'm choosing the high quality, and I'm gonna do you know better quality or whatever they call it. And we're gonna see how long this takes. You can see the settings up there. Let's click it and I'll come back. All right, so the time it took to render that was seven minutes and 59 seconds. Seven minutes and 59 seconds. You can see that that's, it was a six minute and 18 second clip, seven minutes and 59 seconds. So I don't know what that comes out to. Let's say you did a 10 minute clip, it might take you 13 minutes. So you're talking a 13 minute render versus maybe if you get like a newer brand new system like a Mac Studio um, or something like that it might take maybe five, four minutes or something. So I mean obviously you're saving, depending on the videos you do, you're saving some time. But you might be saving 10 minutes when it takes you four or five hours to create the video or even longer. And what's that 10 minutes? I just walk, go get a drink or something, come back, get a water or something. And that's all I do during that time. So it doesn't affect me. So it still works perfectly with 4K. Again, you're gonna get a little bit of stuff on the timeline, which if, you, if you're not running Ventura, that didn't happen before. But with Ventura, a couple things even that got slower, even though how fast the system looks. So keep that in mind. But it is running Ventura. It's running the newest OS. It's running all the new apps that I showed you, and it can do it perfectly fine. And again, you're probably gonna get, this can get the newest OS, like I said, you're probably gonna get a couple, maybe two to three more years of security updates. So this is a perfect system to pick up right now, and then you basically use it for two to three years, and then you sell it to somebody that knows how to use OpenCore and can actually install the newest OS without it being official. And they'll buy it because of this screen. The screen is beautiful. Check out my old video about this. I talk about the screen for a long time. I just love it because it's the, the coolest thing in the world. Oh yeah, and one thing before you all leave me here is if you run YouTube, so YouTube is beautiful. Um, this is one of the reasons you pick this machine up because of that 5K screen. But here's a 4K video, it's running in 4K. You can see it right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. It says, well, it's 1440p in this case. Let's go ahead and change that to 4K. So let's just let that load for a second. Now this is in 4K, I'm gonna go ahead and click the button, you can see it here. Now watch this thing, see how beautiful this is? It runs perfectly. Now let me go ahead and click on open the screen up. Now, again, there's gonna be no stuttering on these things. Everything runs perfectly smooth. It has no problem running 4K, especially the highest quality on YouTube. So if you like watching YouTube videos and you want them in some of the highest quality you can get, obviously this is underwater, so you might think it's getting stuttering, but it's not. This is perfectly smooth. I've used it all the time. There's nothing wrong with running 4K YouTube videos just for con consumption of content. All right, so at the end of the day, let's wrap this video up. I hope this helps people that are deciding maybe they should buy this. Or even if you're thinking of the 2020, the one that's the older 2020, that might be a better choice. But that's even gonna be way faster than this. So if you think, are you, if you're on the fence, is that fast enough, is it not fast enough? Definitely, you know, if this is, that one will be for sure. So hopefully you've learned something. Again, your system will be different. You're not gonna be running off of this. You may not have 24 gigs of RAM. You may not have the base model. But I just wanna show you how this all works out. You make your own decision. That's what my channel is all about. Subscribe if you can, help me grow. I love making you know, videos that are a little bit different than most people out there. We'll talk to everybody soon. As you know, peace.